So in the last video, we talked about for loops in R. Now let's move on to the second type of loops in R, which are while loops. The concepts in while loops are very similar to the for loops, uh, which is repeating multiple tasks. But in contrast with uh, for loops, in while loops, we don't specify the number of iterations or we don't know the number of iterations. Okay. So in while loops, the loops keeps repeated as long as a condition, which is a Boolean condition, is true, okay? So the general syntax for while loop is, uh, you, first of all, you need to initialize, uh, initialize uh, the while loop, okay? So you have to first initialize the while loop, and then you will have the keyboard while, and after that, here you will have a condition, which is a Boolean condition. And we know that the output of the Boolean condition is uh, either true or false. Okay, in the if-else statement, we talked about that in detail. So if the condition was true, so here you will have uh, statements. So uh, all the statements can be one, two, or more than a statement. Anything between these curly brackets will be executed. Okay. And another thing, another uh, difference uh, between the for and while loop is that you need to update your file loop, okay? So in the expressions needs to be updated. So first of all, you have to initialize it. Here you will have a condition. The condition is evaluated. If it was true, because the output of condition is going to be true or false, if it was true, all statement will be executed. And also you need to update the expressions, okay? This process continues until the condition is false. So the while loop will terminate when this condition is false, okay? So let's say uh, we would like to run a while loop to print even number as long as the value is less than 20, okay? So first of all, uh, we have to initialize the while loop. So let's say x is zero. So that's how you can initialize it. And then uh, I will type the word while and I'm going to say that uh, while x is less than 20, and within the curly bracket, I'm going to say that print x. Okay. So x is 0. Less than 20, yes. So 0 is less than 20, print x. And then I'm going to show that uh, uh, add to, so I have to update the condition, right? So I have to say that x is x plus oh, x is x plus two, okay? Because I'm gonna add two uh, values to this value to the zero, okay? So x is zero. Zero is less than twenty, so print zero, okay? And then add two values to zero, so x is now gonna be two. Two is less than twenty, so print two. Add two numbers, four. Four is less than twenty yes prints 4 and so on and let's say x is now 18 and add two values it's x, x is going to be 20 is 20 less than 20 no so 20 will not be printed okay so it's going to be printed from 0 to 18 so as you can see that's the result of while loop. what if uh, so the question is what if you don't update the while loop so if i don't update the while loop so x is going to be 0, right? While 0 is less than 20, yes. And then print 0. So I'm not mm, changing the while loop, okay? I'm not updating the while loop. So 0 is less than 20, yes, print 0. So I'm not updating the value. Again, x is 0. 0 is always less than 20 in here. So it, this while loop is always true. This condition is always true. So you will fall into infinity loop. Okay, so if I run this loop, you will see that the zero is keeps you no know, printing zero. Okay, so uh, you will fall into the infinity loop if the condition is always true. How can I stop this? You have to go here and then print escape, and then it will be stopped. Okay, go to the console and hit the escape. Uh, in your keyboard, it will be stopped. 
So three important differences between for and while loops to keep in mind. First of all, in while loop, you don't specify the number of iterations. Okay, so for for loops, we said that from 1 to 20. So we specified the number of iterations. We had a very specific number of iterations for for loop. But here, as long as the condition is true, this loop will keep going. Okay, so in while loops, we don't know the number of iterations or we don't specify the number of iterations like for loops. Okay, another difference was that for for loops, we don't, we didn't initialize the value for i. So the, for the i, we didn't specify what is the value for i, but here we have to initialize the while loop. Okay, and also for for loops, it added one uh, value for each step or for each item goes to the next item in the vector, for example, in the vector of the uh, list of items, a collection of items. But here you have to update the values, okay? Uh, if you don't update the values in the while loop, you will, you know, fall into the infinity loop as you saw just now. So uh, let's see another example. So let's say uh, we would like to check how many numbers are divisible to 11 between 1000 and 10,000 okay so I don't know the number the not uh, the how many numbers are between uh, how many numbers divisible um, between 1000 and uh, 10,000 okay I or I don't specify uh, how many times it has to be executed the first thing that I have to do is that I have to initialize the while loop so it starts from 1000 and then I'm gonna count it. I'm gonna use a counter. So it's first of all, it's zero. And I'm gonna say that while i is less than 10,000, so what's gonna happen if, I mean, if uh, i modulus 11 was zero, then add one value to the count. Okay, count is going to be count plus one okay and don't forget that you need to update the while loop too so while is going to be i going to be i plus one so so first of all i is going to be 1000 right here and count is zero is 1000 less than 10,000 yes is uh so i is going to be 10 uh, 1000 1000 uh, modulus 11 is 0 or not. If it's not, go to the next value, which is i plus 1, 1001. Otherwise, if it was divisible to 11, add one value to count. Okay. So if I run this line of code, it will show me that there are 819 values divisible between 1000 and 10,000 uh, for divisible by 11. Okay. And uh, I now it's going to be 10,000. 10,000 is less than 10,000. No, so it will jump to the line 25. So in this example, what if we wanted to have the actual values? Okay, so like the four loops, what if we want to have the actual values that are divisible by 11? I have to use an empty vector and you don't have to specify the number of elements or lengths because we don't know the number of iterations. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to know or the actual values that are divisible by 11, okay, between 1000 and 10,000. So I will define a vector, for example, output, and I don't specify the number of the values because for the while loops, we don't know that or we don't specify that. And I have to initialize the while loop, so i is going to be 1000, and I'm going to say that while i is less than 10,000, so what's going to happen? So I'm going to say that if uh, i modulus 11 was 0, which means that it was divisible by 0, uh, the output, it's going to be, so here, the output is going to be uh, output, which is an empty, and the value i. Because I want to see the actual value, which was divisible by 11. So it's going to be a concatenation. And don't forget that for the while loop, you need to update the while loop. i equals to i plus 1. So let's see 
what's going to happen. Output, which has the actual values, okay, is an empty vector. I is 1,000. 1,000 is less than 10,000. So is I uh, 1,000 1, divisible by 11? This The modulus is 0. If it was, it's going to be uh, print, just show me the value of I, okay? And then don't forget that you need to add another, add one value to I. So we need to update this loop. For while loop, you have to update the while. And then 1001, is it divisible by 11? So just concat the value of the output and the next value of I and so on. So you will see that the output is now, it's going to be So all of these values, okay, for example, this one, if you divide it by 11, so the value is exactly this one. If you find that uh, you will not have a decimal number, you, it's going to be a whole number, of, or the modulus is going to be 0, which means that it's divisible by 11. And the last value is 9,999. If you divide it by 11, it's going to be zero but if you add another one it's going to be 10,000 so it's uh, doesn't meet the condition goes to the next the last uh, uh, goes after the while loop which is line 36 and uh, similar to the for loops you can use a break statement in the while loop okay for example uh, let's say I have mm, let me initialize the while loop okay so let's say I equals to one and I'm going to say that while i is less than 10, okay, just print i for me. Print i, but if, okay, I'm going to say that if uh, i was exactly 6, what's going to happen? Break the loop, okay? Don't forget that you need to update the while loop i equals to i plus 1, okay? So i is 1, prints 1. Is 1 exactly 6? No. So i is going to be 2. Goes here, prints 2. Is exactly 6? No. So it will not run this code. i is going to be 3. And then i is going to be 6, prints 6. But is i exactly 6? Yes. So it will break the entire uh, bunch of entire block of code and then we'll jump to the line 51. Don't forget that first of all you have to uh, run this line of code i is 1. 1 is less than 10. It's going to print 1, 2, 3, 4, even print 6 and then we'll, we'll break the according to here. First print 6 and then checks if it's 6. Yes, it will uh, break the this code. So it will print 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Okay, so uh, final example, we want to know the first positive integer number, which the square of that integer number exceeds 4,000, okay? So I have to initialize the number and also the square number. If the square was uh, less than 4,000, this loop will keep running. Otherwise, it will stop the value and I will see the exact integer that the s square was greater than 4000 so i need to have to uh, initialize the number and also the square of that number okay so i and then for example the square is going to be zero so i will initialize the loop with this two value i'm going to say that while a square is less than 4000 okay What's going to happen? First of all, I'm going to add one value to the integer number. i is going to be i plus 1. And then the square is going to be i square. Okay. i square. So how this works? Uh, first of all, i is 0. The square is 0. So is 0 is less than 4,000? Yes. So i is going to be 1. And a square is going to be 1 squared, which is 1. So is 1 less than 4,000? Yes, uh, so i is going to be, we'll add one value, i is going to be 2, a square is going to be 2 squared, which is 4. 
is 4 less than 4,000, I is going to be 3, a square is going to be 9. Is uh, 9 less than 4,000, I is going to be 4, a square is going to be 16. Is 16 less than 4,000, I is going to be 5, a square is going to be 25. 25 is less than 4,000. Uh, all the way up to the last time that a uh, square is not, is greater than 4,000. Okay, so it's less than or equal to. 4,000. If it ex exceeds that one, I will print the value of the that integer. Okay, I will print the value that the square is greater than 4,000. So let me run this line of code. File and i is 64. Okay, so the first value that the uh, the square of that it will exceed the 4,000. It's going to be 64. For example, if you have 63 squared, sorry, 63 squared, it's less than 4,000, but 64 squared, it's going to be greater than 4,000.